Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm here at the Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania at Beechwood Nature Reserve. And I just attended a great event. It was called the Native Seed Sowing Program, where we learned how to propagate and plant native seeds for this upcoming growing season. And I'm joined today, really lucky to be joined today, by the program's instructor, Roxanne Swan. Roxanne, how are you doing today? Yeah, great. Awesome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the kind of work that you do here. What's, what's your background in and what kind of work do you do here? Sure. Uh, I'm an environmental botanist. Um, I've been working in the green industry about 25 years. I uh, love what I do. Um, really out there to educate people on benefits of plants, native plants specifically, and um, just to uh, get my hands in the dirt and show other people how to um, go out there and make a difference in the environment. Awesome. So why native plants in particular? This whole class focused on native plants. We weren't talking about anything from a different country nor any invasive species. So what's, what's the deal with native plants? Why is everybody talking about native plants? I think the most important thing about native plants to know is that our um, indigenous wildlife is completely dependent on those species. So without the plants out there, we wouldn't have the, the beautiful birds, the fantastic butterflies, and all the other wildlife that we um, you know, come to know in western Pennsylvania. Um, they're just uh, very crucial to, um, to everything that we know. And so for somebody just getting into native plant garden, gardening, let's say they have a plot of land, they removed all the invasives and they want to start planting natives. I know it's hard to narrow it down, but if you can narrow it down maybe three to five that they should start with, if you can, what would your top three to five native plants oh, be? Oh, absolutely. Um, you can, okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, I, I'll start and why? from okay. I'll start from the the largest to the smallest. I think um, eastern hemlock, our state tree. Um, they're going through a pretty rough time right now. They're um, being attacked by uh, a couple of different insect pests. So out in the wild, they're really under a lot of stress. A lot of them are dying. So um, if home gardeners or, or homeowners can plant them and keep an eye on them, um, it's a lot easier to maintain uh, and control these pests in a, in a home environment than it is in the forest. And we really hate to lose our state tree. Um, so uh, they're a great landscape plant, um, pretty easy to maintain. Um, and, and they just they look beautiful uh, and they're going to provide a lot of shelter for some of our birds. Um, white oak, uh, probably one of the most um, uh, important trees for wildlife. I, they support hundreds of different um, insects which you know support birds and, and our higher life forms. Um, so they're very important. Service berry, um, probably one of my favorite plants. Uh, four seasons of interest. Edible fruit. Um, beautiful fall color, uh, and they also support a lot of pollinating insects and, and wildlife. Um, and then, of course, I can't not talk about milkweed, um, monarch butterflies. Again, another um, another uh, species that's under um, a lot of stress. Uh, milkweed's the only plant that they can um, feed to their young, and or that their young feed from and uh, we don't have enough of it out there. So the more we can get out, the better. Awesome, and you talked a little bit in this class about growing milkweed from seed, and it's a unique procedure. Can you explain that just a little bit? Sure. Because you um, can't just put it in the ground, right? Right, yeah, milkweed uh, produces so many seeds. If you've ever seen the little fluffy, um, I used to make a wish on them when I was a kid and they'd blow away. Um, they have really low viability. So the plant produces so many seeds in order that just a few will actually turn into plants. Um, so if you're uh, harvesting them to, uh, to grow yourself, you need to plant way more than you expect to have um, plants from. And also they need light to germinate. So you don't want to cover the seed up with soil whenever you're um, sowing them either inside or outside, you want to make sure that they're exposed to light so that, um, so that they'll be successful. Uh, are there any native plants that maybe we should not focus on planting, maybe because they're too aggressive? Um, and can you explain what aggressive means? Because it's not invasive, right? but uh, it describes a native plant. But are there any that we should maybe not focus on planting? The only either? one I can think of that we should not focus on planting is poison ivy. And yes, it is invasive. <laughs> Um, if you're at Beechwood Farms, though, you'll see that we do have a lot of poison ivy here because it is a food source for birds. 
Um, it does produce a, a berry that birds depend on. So um, out in the wild where people aren't walking around, you know, it, it, again, it's a native plant. So it's, um, it's going to be out there and, and supporting wildlife. But you don't want to plant that on your property. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a problem with aggressive plants. I just think that you need to put them in a space where you can let them go. Um, so if, if you know a plant's aggressive, you don't want to put it next to something that is not aggressive because it'll uh, over, um, overpower it. But I really don't have a problem with um, aggressive plants in the right place. I've heard pokeweed by some people, but you don't mind planting it? Yeah, I don't like have it. a problem with yeah, that. Yeah, I like it. It's a great <laughs> plant for sure. Um, and outside of gardening for food, edible purposes, any foreign plants or imported that you do recommend planting? Um, or are you just strictly native? Uh, not, no, I don't, I don't really have just an all native um, mindset, but I think if you're, um, if you're planting something, you want to make sure that you really research it so that it's not something that will become invasive or uh, be a detriment to our wildlife. Uh, I think probably the best and safest things are, are evergreens because they're going to provide shelter um, and protection in the winter for a lot of our birds. And we don't have a whole ton of native evergreens, uh, native evergreen trees. So I think that's probably one of, one of my suggestions okay. if you're going to do, um, if you're, you're going to plant some uh, European or Asian species, um, evergreens are probably the best bet. Okay. Um, favorite native plant? I know you said amelanchier or service berry. Is that it? That probably is. That's today. My, I think that's mine too. That's mine today. Uh, come talk to me maybe in a month when something fantastic is blooming, and, okay. and that would be my favorite. <laughs> Why for is day, it? But Do you like to eat the berries or yeah, wildlife? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. It it has um, tremendous wildlife value, mm -hmm. both for insects, bees. Um, and birds and, and, and other forms of wildlife in the edible berry. Uh, the fruit's delicious. You can eat it right off the tree um, and make pies and, and cupcakes with it. Uh, you can um, enjoy fantastic white flower before the leaves come on. So it's, it's kind of one of those spring, uh, welcome, welcome to mm -hmm. spring plants. And I love that. It has a, a, a really nice flower, great fall color. Um, and wonderful silver gray bark. So in the winter time, it, it's still looking beautiful in the garden. Where can people learn more about the programs that you lead here uh, and more about the Audubon Society Western PA? Well, you can surely check our website, um, uh, aswp.org. Um, we have a listing of events and lots of information on native plants. Um, and uh, there's always great native plant uh, workshops throughout the city that you can, uh, that you can check out. Awesome. Well, any closing thoughts, any final words for our viewers? I just say get out there <laughs> and plant. Um, thanks so much for today. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for sharing your expertise. Um, get out to the Audubon Society of Western PA at Beechwood Nature Reserve. It's a great place to be. A lot of cool programs. I'll link to all that uh, contact information down below so that you won't miss any of it. But thanks again. Thank you, Roxanne. Thanks. And we'll see you next time.